Welcome to tutorial part four of the Razor Pages with Entity Framework Core in ASP.NET Core. Now today we are going to learn about migration. So this is about the Contessa University web app, which we are gradually building. Uh, and we have started from the part one. So if you have missed the past one, two, and three, please catch up and watch those videos from end to end, from start to finish, to get the best out of the series. Okay, so as I told that the, this tutorial is all about Entity Framework core, work, core migrations, and migrations feature are used for managing data model changes. Now, when a new app is developed, the data model changes frequently. Each time the model changes, the model gets out of sync with the database. This tutorial started by configuring the entity framework to create the database if it doesn't exist. Now, each time the data model changes, the database is dropped. Entity framework creates a new one that matches the model and app seeds the data database with the test data. That is what we have already seen. Now, this approach to keep the DB in sync with the data model works well until you deploy the app to the production. Now, when the app is running in production, it is usually storing data that needs to be maintained. Now, you cannot just drop uh, the database and recreate the database. So, the app can't start with a test DB each time a change is made, such as adding a new column. That is, to, if, if there is any change in the database schema, the database needs to retain its uh, original data. So, the EF Entity Framework Core Migrations feature solves this problem by enabling the Entity Framework Core to update the database schema instead of creating a new database altogether after dropping the existing database. So that's what it is. So we will now switch over to the... Now with this project loaded of the Contoso University, um, I'll go for the tools. Uh, oops and uh, NuGet package manager, package manager console. So there's a new window, which we'll get more familiar as we progress through the course. And what we'll do, we'll just give it a command, drop database. And as the command suggests, it will drop the existing database. Okay, so are you sure you want to perform this action? Performing the operation drop database on target database? Yes. Yes. Okay, let's see what happens. It is dropping the database. Successfully dropped database. So that dot database is no more that we are so used to in the last three lectures. Um, now, we will create an initial migration and update the database. Now, the, in the Visual Studio, the command is this. I've copied and pasted. Add migration initial create. And then update database. We're going to explain it shortly. So it's, it says all done now to the explanation now the entity framework core migrations add okay this add command where we have seen it we have given it add migration so add this command add with some switch this command generated the code to create the database now this migrations code is in the migrations. Now this is a new directory which was not there. It was created by this action. And this has also got a timestamp. This is the timestamp and slash initial create.cs file. 
Now let's open this file. So this has got a protected void override up, this up method and there is a down method, I would guess, yes, down method. So what does the up method do? It creates the database tables. So it creates the database table that correspond to the data model entity sets and the down method deletes them. Okay, so uh, up method create table name course, create migration builder dot create table students and dot create table enrollment right and it does all the primary key it, it it also enforces the foreign key constraints and that's good and down method it has got several sections to drop the table enrollment drop the table course and drop the table all the tables are dropped so now the up method it calls to implement the data model changes for a migration. When you enter a command to roll back that update, the migration calls the down method. Now this preceding code, this, this is the code that we just explained, is for initial migration. This code was created when the migration add initial create command was run. The migration name parameter initial create, initial create here, is used for the file name right so it has created initial create timestamp underscore initial create okay now it's best to choose a word it could be any valid file name and it's best to choose a word or phrase that summarizes what is being done in the migration for example a migration that added a department table might be called add department table now if the initial migration is created and database exists the database creation code is generated. The database creation code doesn't need to run because the database already matches the data model. Now, if the DB creation code is run, it does not make any changes because the database already matches the data model. Now, when the app is deployed to a new environment, the DB creation code must be run to create the DB. Right? It makes sense. Right? Uh, previously, the DB was dropped and does not exist, so migration creates the new database. Now, next we are going to learn about data model snapshot. Now, migrations create a snapshot of the current database schema in this, you know, there is school context model dot snapshot, okay, snapshot dot CS. This is the database model snapshot. Okay, now to delete a migration, we can use this command remove hyphen migration. Now the remove migrations command deletes the migration and ensures that the snapshot is correctly reset. Now we shall also go for this. You can give this command remove migration and see what happens. Ourselves. Remove migration. Uh, it says the migration of this initial create has already been applied to the database. Revert it and try again. If the migration has been applied to other databases, consider reverting its change. Okay. Uh, anyway, so uh, it hasn't done it successfully for some reason. Um, initial create has already been applied to the database. Revert it and try again. So I probably uh, need to okay we'll leave it at that and we'll move on so now remove ensure created and test the app for early development the ensure created was used for in this tutorial we the migrations are used so ensure created has the following limitations so it bypasses migrations and create the database and schema and it doesn't create a migration stable it cannot be used with migrations it is designed for rapid prototyping and testing whether database is dropped and recruited frequently so in the db initializer that we have seen in the data folder uh, db initializer 
we have created context dot database dot ensure created so if it was not already uh, comment out commented out you just commented it out but in my present context I have already uh, uh, commented it as if it is not there now let's run the data app and see if the database is seeded or not Yes, it is seeded. The three data are there. Okay. Um, right. Now we'll use the SQL Server Object Explorer to ex inspect the database. So let's SQL Server Object Explorer and just expand this node expand this node local db now this one databases uh, let's refresh it yeah in this one so tables Oh, yeah, this one. So, DBO underscore EF migrations history. Now, this table keeps tracks of which migration have been applied to the table. Let's see the view the data. View data. So, migration ID was there and product version was this. Right? And now it shows one row for the first migration the last login preceding output example shows the insert statement that creates this row okay now i will run the app and verify everything works but you know i have already seen that but again let's run it So entries are there. Now, how do we apply migrations in production? We recommend production apps should not call database.migrate at application startup. Migration, migrate shouldn't be called from an app in the server farm. For example, if the app has been cloud deployed with scale out, multiple instances of the app are running. So database at dot migrate at application startup should not be called now database migration should be done as part of the deployment and in a controlled way production database migration approaches include using migrations to create sql scripts and using sql scripts in deployment okay and running a command which is dotnet ef database update so this is uh, this command sorry let me give it to you okay uh, I'll write it Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.